from the Sao Fernando Golf Club. A course carved through a valley of forests in Sao Paulo, Brazil. A match between the winner of the 1969 Masters, the Pensacola and New Orleans tournaments, George Archer from Gilroy, California. And the outstanding Canadian touring professional, a member of the 1968 World Cup Championship Canadian team, George Knudsen of Toronto, Canada. And a newcomer to the tour who played so well in the American Golf Classic and won over $35,000 in his rookie year, Lee Elder of Washington, D.C. On the scene to describe the action is three-time winner of the Masters, PGA Hall of Fame member, Jimmy DeMara. This is Shell's wonderful world of golf, an international championship elimination tournament played on the world's most famous courses. This week, the Sao Fernando Golf Club in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The Polistas proudly say that theirs is the fastest growing city in the world. And a few hours in this dynamic atmosphere will convince you that they must be right. All these people couldn't have been here yesterday. The fact is, in a few short years, Sao Paulo has become the largest city in Brazil and is growing every day. It is the industrial capital of the country and is rapidly shouldering its way into the list of major cities of the world. And what sort of person is the resident of Sao Paulo, the polista? Well, he comes from every ethnic group. But no matter what his background, he is a 100% Brazilian. He lives at a pace that is somewhat unusual in South America. There is no place here for the delightful Latin custom of siesta. He works in industry, and the chances are good that he is a part of Brazil's new automotive industry, biggest and most productive on the continent. On Sunday, he goes to the park after church and views with a critical eye the work of Sao Paulo's artists. Or he drives the short distance to Santos, Sao Paulo's port, to spend the day on the beautiful beaches or to watch the inevitable soccer game. He is, in a way, the new Brazilian, hard-working, proud of his country and his city. He may not have the easy-going attitude and charm of his carioca cousin from Rio de Janeiro, but he firmly believes that he is the future. Today we have an opening round match in our International Championship Elimination Tournament featuring 12 of the world's finest professional golfers. They'll be competing for a top prize money of $37,000. And this is the way it works. As you know, the first round matches have three different professionals in each. In an opening round match, Roberto Di Vicenzo beat Tom Weiskopf and Dave Stockton. And he will meet the winner of today's match. That semifinal will be held in Canada. In last week's opening round match, Dan Sykes won over Miller Barber and Bob Murphy. He will meet the winner of next week's opening round match in Mexico City, Mexico. And their semifinal will be played in New Orleans, Louisiana. Winners in the semifinals will then tee off for the championship to be played at the Olympic Club in San Francisco, California. Lee, it's certainly nice to have you with us on the Shell Show. And incidentally, you're one of the new breed that qualified on the PGA school down in the Palm Beach Gardens. And you fellas have done terrific, haven't you? Yes, Jimmy. I were very fortunate uh, to go to the PGA school and uh, qualify there because they had some very good golfers. And uh, last year was my first year on tour, and I did very well there, I think, myself. And also, I would like to point out that uh, out of the 30 guys that uh, received their cards, nine were fi finished in the top 60 money winners last year, and we won something like $312,000. Oh, so. my goodness. You boys are doing terrific. And... Uh, Certainly want to wish you the best of everything in your future tournaments and here on the Shell Show. Thank you very much. And we have uh, George Newton, our friend from Canada here, uh, who to me is one of the real great golfers and a tremendous swinger and a solid hitter of a golf ball. And George, 
It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Jim, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I watched you and Lee play. Uh, and what do you think of this golf course? Oh, it's a great little golf course. Um, I really didn't expect to find something this beautiful. It's well-conditioned, and it's got a lot of character. Uh, well, good luck to you, too, George. Thank you. And, of course, the uh, old green coat kid himself, uh, George Orchard, 6'6", six, six, and uh, considered by most of the uh, players as being one of the finest putters on the tour, but I had the pleasure of playing with this man, and he hits all the shots fine. George, it's nice to have you. Well, thank you very much, Gene. Uh, you said coat. They call it a temp, and they made that coat that my size. But Do I look like Sarah's? <laughs> <laughs> But it's a real pleasure to be here, and I'm really having a great time. Well, wonderful. Uh, uh, what do you think of this fine layout? Well, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I have to agree with George. I was very surprised to find a golf course this well manicured down here, and uh, I think it's a real fine layout. You've played a lot of times in Brazil before, though, haven't you? Well, uh, in South America, I've played a few times. This is my first time in Brazil, and uh, I'm having a great time. Well, good. Good luck to all of you. And Thank you. I think, George, you won the honor, didn't you? Yeah, sure. So why don't you get over there and tee it up? Okay. A fine starting hole here at the Sao Fernando Golf Club in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's a par 3, 179 yards long. The course is playing just over 6,500 yards long, and par is 70. We'll be playing under the rules of the Brazilian Golf Association, which are identical to the RNA. So the players will have the option of playing the large or the small ball. And with the honor is George Knudsen. George has selected his club, and it looks like he's going to a five iron. It's a nice shot right straight at the flag. It's going to carry just a little bit far. It lands about 15 feet back of the cup on line and stops about 25 feet away. Big George Archer, Masters champion. George is using a six iron. George hooks it off to the left. It's going to land on the green just about pin high. It trickles back to the left side of the green, and George, too, stops about the same distance, maybe a few feet farther away than George Knudsen. Here's Lee Elder, who performed so well in the Firestone Classic in Akron, Ohio. Lee is going with a five iron. And uh, he pulls it off to the left just a little bit. It's going to land uh, just, oh, just over the trap kicks back down the embankment, running back toward the green, and he is about 40 feet away. So all the players got off to a good start, and uh, they're all on the green. Uh, Lee is just about an inch, or oh, about a foot, I should say, in the frog hair. Oh, that looks like a very good approach putt. It's swinging to the right now. Very fine approach putt by Lee Elder, and uh, he ran it past the hole about uh, just a little over a foot. George Orchard will be second to putt. He's up above the cup, and this should be a little slick. And it's a good-looking stroke. It has a chance. Oh, boy, I thought for sure that was going in. Uses a stiff wrist. That is par three, and George Knudsen about 21 feet out with a putt that swings slightly to his left. Knudsen firms it at the hole. It's going to hang out there, though. It didn't uh, break, and of course I must tell you that uh, this morning there's a little dew on the grass, and the balls are not taking the break that they will a little later on. George gets his par, and if Lee holds this about uh, 16 inches away, all three players will start with their pars. Lee gets his par. Officiating our match today is uh, Jesse Reinhardt, the president of the Brazilian Golf Association, and I'm sure you won't have too many problems today, Jesse, with I these fellows. I uh, think the course is in good shape, and uh, we'll have no trouble with these fellows at all. Well, good. And through the first hole, all three players get par threes, the match is all even on Shell's wonderful world of golf. The 380-yard par-4 second hole dog legs to the right. Trees guard that side of the fairway, while on the left side there's a lake about 265 yards from the tee. A creek crosses the fairway out about 80 yards from the green, which is bunkered right and left. 
All three players drove in the center of the fairway. Archer and Knudsen were out about 270 yards. Elder, about 20 yards shorter up the tee, was first to play his second shot. Lee's about 130 yards from the hole. Here's Lee Elder with a 9-iron for his second shot. He hits it right on line. It's going to land a little short and stops very fast, and he's about 15 feet short and slightly to the right. Big George is going with the wedge. He's about 110 yards from the pin. Tries to nip the ball and the turf. He does. He nips it real good right at the flag. If it's up, it's going to be a good one. Oh, boy, what a shot. Almost hold it. Here's Knudsen. He'll also go with a wedge. George uh, is going to be a little to the left of the flag. It's going to be a beauty, though. It lands just short, has a lot of spin, and stops almost cup high, and he is only about six feet away. Elder is about 15, and George Archer, two feet. Lee Elder two-putted for a routine par, but Archer and Knudsen were going for birdies and an early lead in the match. Oh, right in there, old George. Taps it in to go one on the par. Archer with about a three-footer for his birdie. Well, there wasn't any doubt about it. Uh, George, are you using, using the large or the small ball? Uh, Jimmy, I'm using the small ball. They let you have the choice down here in South America, and I think the small ball is just much easier to play with, and the greens are so well, so good here that uh, I think it's just as good putting, too. And I notice uh, that both you and uh, George Knudsen here stop the ball very well, so apparently you don't get a, a flyer with that little thing, do you? Well, no, the ball, if you hit the ball first, you're all right. Once in a while we catch them a little flat, <laughs> then you got to watch out. Well, good putt and good birdie. Thank you. George, congratulations for that nice putt of yours there. Thank you, Jim. That, uh, that looks like the old Newtson that I know. It's a little bit of what I've done <laughs> in the past, I can tell you that. What ball are you playing with? I've got the small ball, and as George said, I think it's definitely to your advantage to play it. Um, I know in the practice rounds that uh, you look at that small thing, it makes the hole look a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to both of you. Two fine birdies, and through the second hole, Knudsen and Archer are one under par. Lee Elder is even par. On the par four, 421-yard third hole, George Knudsen hit a perfect drive about 265 yards from the tee. Archer's tee shot out about 250 yards was on the right-hand side of the fairway, but he was stymied by the trees, which blocked his line to the hole. Lee Elder hit the best tee shot of all about 270 yards down the center of the fairway. So George Archer using a five iron, is away. He lofts it up over the trees. He's coming at the green. It's going to land short and runs up toward the putting surface and trickles back down the hill, and he comes to rest just short of the putting surface. George Knudsen playing a six iron. One of the fine swingers of a golf club and a great hitter of a golf ball, George Knudsen starts, starts it right at the flag and carries over, stops immediately, and he is about 12 feet just back of the cup, coming downhill. Here's Lee Elder. Lee is uh, the longer of the three off the tee, and he pushes it to the right a little bit. It's swinging back to the left, and is going to land on the green, jumps up and kicks over into the fringe, and he is about three feet off to the right and slightly past the cup. George Archer, just short of the green, is going to chip up with a six iron. He's about 50 feet away, and he's awfully good at this. And he hits it. It's running up the hill, but then hits the grain of the grass and stops about four feet short, maybe five. He's going to mark it. Lee Elder's off the clipped portion of the green, and he is going with a, an eight iron. Good chip. Very good. solid chip. Right. Oh, boy, very good. He went past the hole and left himself an uphill putt, which he wanted to do. Notice that the sun has burned the fog off and beautiful day right here on the third hole. A couple of players have shedded their sweaters. Here's George with a downhiller, about 12 feet, putting for a second consecutive birdie. Oh, oh boy. Two birdies in a row for George. That's quite a start here for Newton. And he whipped it right in there. 
George Archer with about a five footer up hill on his par. Oh boy, he used a lot of that left cup there and it swung around and went off and he got his bogey. George, how are these cups or the backs of them? Your balls seem to hang in there like it had glue. I think this little ball's a little heavier than that big one. <laughs> Certainly runs in there, doesn't it? Sure does. Here's Lee with about a two and a half foot uphill putt for his par four. He got it. Nice four. And through the third hole, George Archer picked up a bogey five. Lee Elder pars. And George Knudsen takes a two-stroke lead. He is two under par. On the 387-yard par four fourth hole, Elder hooked his drive and was in among the trees to the left. Lee was away, and from that rough, he'll try to punch the ball low with a seven iron. He hits a nice shot up under the trees. It's going to land on the down slope of the fairway, runs up toward the green, off to the right, and will just miss the sand trap to the right of the green. And the ball is short of the green and to the right. George Archer only about 115 yards short of the green with a wedge for his second shot. Archer's line to the pin is blocked by a tree. Lifts it up high toward the green. It's way up in the air. It's going off to the fly again. It hits on the front side and runs up and stops very well. A very high shot there by Archer and stopped about five feet away. Here's Newton, started 3-3-3, three, three, three. just a half wedge shot. Nips a little punch shot, it's going to land short. Will it jump up? It does. It takes a nice up spin toward the uh, cup, swings off to the right, and he is to the left and back of the hole about 10 feet. Lee will be using a wedge here. Not much green to work with. He has a trap between the, the pin and himself. He's just below the green on the right side. Can't put any spin on it. Oh, that's a good-looking golf shot. Good-looking shot. Oh, you just can't hit it any better than that. He lofted it up with no chance to put spin on it. Dead in the shot. It landed just on the quick portion of the green and ran just to the left of the hole. Almost hold it. After all three players got their pars, we talked to Lee about his very fine wedge shot here on the fourth hole. Lee, congratulations. That was, to me, one of the toughest shots in golf that you just pulled off there, that little uh, shot uh, below the green. Thank you very much, Jimmy. That's my lifesaver. <laughs> you know. But uh, this old here, I've always had trouble with it, even during my practice. I don't know. I seem to sit up and want to cut the ball, and I hit over the top of it and draw it quite a bit. So I'm happy to get out with a four on this hole. Oh, that, that, that was great. And, uh, Lee, incidentally, you have an unusual grip. What do you have, an interlock and an overlap there? No, the I have time? a double overlap, Jimmy, more this way. When I uh, overlap just once, my right hand is so strong, and uh, I just constantly hook the ball quite a bit. So I thought if I overlapped uh, one more finger that it would kind of lighten up my right hand, and so far I've been pretty successful with it. Well, you certainly have, and good luck to you for the remaining poles. And through the fourth hole, George Knudsen still leads at two under par. On the 427-yard par-4 fifth hole, Knudsen and Elder were in the middle of the fairway. Archer outdrove his opponents, but hooked his shot behind the trees on the left. Knudsen, about 240 yards off the tee, was away. Moves it out to the right. It's uh, drawing back uh, toward the flag and almost carried in. Oh, it almost carried in the cup on a fly. It lived just about three inches short of the cup. Spun to the left and stopped less than a foot away. What a beautiful iron shot by Newton. After Elder three-putted to bogey the hole and Archer two-putted for his par, Newton had the short one for his third birdie of the day. Fine birdie for George. And he certainly has a hot streak going. And through the fifth hole, George Newton picks up his third birdie. He is three under par on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. The Riches of the Earth. Brazil is one of the world's foremost producers of semi-precious stones. Stones that are painstakingly shaped and polished by the skilled hands of the artisan and transformed into magnificent jewelry. Amethyst, topaz, garnet, aquamarine, 
These are just a few of the gems that lie hidden in the rich earth of Brazil. But there is another kind of wealth that comes from the earth, more valuable by far than all the jewels. And this wealth can be seen in the colorful street markets that add their own particular flavor to the life of the city. the same fertile soil and soft, gentle climate that combine to make Brazil a rich agricultural country also create ideal conditions under which thrive agriculture's greatest enemy, insects. The saúva ants, historically, have been the most destructive pests in Brazil. Brazilians say, either Brazil destroys the saúva ants, or the ants will destroy Brazil. These insects can devastate large areas of land, turning the earth sour and barren. A product of shell research has been found to be remarkably effective in the control of the saúva ant. And Shell of Brazil is now engaged in an extensive training program among Brazil's farmers in the proper use of this product. Thanks to the magic of modern science, the Brazilian farmer has a new ally in his constant battle to produce more food for more people. The knowledge and skills of dedicated men and women are changing the face of agriculture throughout the world. Scientists in a number of Shell Research Centers, such as Shell's Agricultural Research Center in Modesto, California, are solving the problems of the farmer, and in so doing, are making the world a more pleasant, more productive place in which to live. They are a part of Shell's worldwide search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. The sixth hole, par three at the South Fernando Golf Club is 151 yards long with a valley separating the tee from the green and this green is almost completely surrounded by seven sand traps. The players will be going for the $10,000 hole in one prize money and here's George Knudsen with an eight iron. It's another ball right on line. It's a good looking shot. It's going to uh, land out to the right just a little bit and uh, stops about 25 feet away. Here's Archer, George with an eight iron. Very upright backswing, taking advantage of his height. He's on the same line with uh, Knudsen and carries almost on Knudsen's ball just a little bit to the left and stops past the cup off to the right. Lee Elder, Lee's using a seven iron. That's a good looking shot. It's going to land to the right too. It jumps up and towards George Archer's ball and he and Archer are about the same distance away and Knudsen about another six feet out. George pushed his tee shot with the eight iron off to the right side. He's down about 30 feet away, cutting uphill with a break to the left. It's, he said, whoa, he's giving it uh, the whoa. He knew he hit it too hard the second he drew the club back. He was going uphill, but bang, that one very hard, and he ran past with it. Oh, he's got a tough butt coming back. Here's Lee, just a cup high to the right, 17 feet. He's re-putted the last green. And it is, didn't break very much. Gosh, it looked like an awfully steep breakdown to the left there for Lee, but it hung out on that right side all the way. 15 feet out is Big George Orchard. Good looking stroke. Oh, boy, they were all fooled there. It looks like a big break. Apparently, there's an optical illusion here on this green. You don't fool the three fine putters like Elder Knudsen and Archer too often. And all went the same way. Left it out to the right. Here's George coming back for his par. It's a tough one. Sort of a hog back. This could drop either way. Delicate little putt. Oh, and he missed it off to the right. Ball broke fast coming back, and those are known as white knucklers. That uh, downhill slider either way. And George made his first bogey of the day after three birdies of the first five holes. He drops back to two under par. Archer putting far par. This will leave him at even par. Boy, his ball broke fast, too. Now, 
there are two fine putters that both three putted, and Lee Elder could pick up a stroke on Archer and Knudsen if he makes this. His is about uh, 18 inches out. And Lee got his. Lee Elder picked up a par and regained the stroke on Knudsen and Archer. And George Knudsen still leads. He is two under par. On the par five, 559 yards, seventh hole, Lee Elder decided to cut the dogleg to the right. He drove over the trees and through the rough, finishing up on the right-hand side of the fairway about 270 yards from the tee. George Knudsen then followed with a drive which stayed out on the left and was in light rough about 265 yards away. George Archer also played a conservative shot, driving to the left and finishing up a yard or so short of Knudsen's ball out in light rough. All three players then selected four woods for their second shots and finished up close to the green. Leal is away and he'll be using a wedge for his third shot. going to go right at the flag. Will it stop? No, it didn't. It hit on the down slope, took the overspin, and ran in the back side of the green. Here's George Archer. Looks like he's going to play a pitch and run. He does. Runs it up the hill. It's running firm. It's going to be right up close to Elder's ball, running up near Elder's ball, and just past it about a couple of inches. Here's Knudsen from under the pine trees. Lofts it up. It's going to stop. Oh, it hit on the up slope short of the green and stopped way short. All three players, only about 30 or 40 feet short of the cup, left themselves with long birdie putts. Knudsen about 35 feet out. Puts it up on line. It's breaking. back of the cup and jumped up about four inches and down into the saddle. Well, after three putting the last hole, he came back with a great long cut for his uh, birdie, and that's the way the game goes. Lee Elder and George Archer settled for their par fives, and Newton's lead increased to four strokes. They get another chance at the hole-in-one prize money here on the 170-yard par three eighth hole. It's really a beautiful hole, playing from an elevated tee across the lake with an island in the middle. The green is surrounded by two bunkers on each side. George Knudsen with a hot stick, with a six iron off the tee, lofts it up high, lands on the back side of the green, and comes to rest just almost immediately. Remember, Shell pays $10,000 for a hole-in-one, and we had one a couple of years ago at uh, Barcelona, Spain. Here's Lee Elder with a six iron. And Lee is going to land uh, on the front side of the green and stops after running about three feet. George Archer also using a six iron. That looks good. It's on line all the way. It's a good looking golf shot. Oh, he hit the upslope. Didn't get the uh, bounce up that he expected. And uh, he has about a 12 or 14 foot putt for his birdie. All three players two putted for routine pars and there was no change in the match. On the par four, 442 yard ninth hole, Knudsen hit another perfect shot straight up the middle of the fairway about 270 yards from the tee. Elder's tee shot was down the fairway about 245 yards. George Archer then hooked his drive in the trees to the left and had a very difficult shot to the green about 250 yards from the tee. Elder was away and selected a three iron. He hits it off to the right. It's hanging out. They may catch the trap. We'll see. It's going to catch in the sand trap off to the right side of the green. And he has himself a long explosion back toward the pin. The pin is cut on the left, about the left center of the green. George Archer hooked his tee shot out in the trees. He is going to play about a five iron for his second shot. George Archer hits his second shot. 
It's hooking off to the left. It's going to land way over to the left side, down in front of the first tee, way off to the left side of the green. Hooded the club face in, and he's way below the green and in trouble. Here's George Knudsen with a six iron for his second shot. Here's George. He's at the flag on line all the way. Beautiful shot. It's going to land just to the right of pin. Kick it to the left. And there he is again, right uh, about six or seven feet, putting for his fifth birdie this nine. He is three and a par. George Archer from out of the trees to the left hooked the ball way more than he intended to. It's down below the first tee and about 15 feet below the green. He's chipping it up with a wedge, and it looks awfully good. Oh, it hit the uh, fringe of the green and spun back and stopped on the green about a foot. He has a long putt for his par. Lee Elder pushed his ball out to the right in the sand trap. Has a good lie, although it's a very long trap shot. Difficult one, and he catches a lot of sand, and lifts it right at the flag, and stops about 10 feet away. Good shot there. Lee didn't take much time there. He set his feet firm in the way it went. George Archer, down below the green in two, pitched it up and has about a 16-foot putt for his par four. Very steep breaking putt to the right and slick. Oh, boy. He hit it firm and it looked like it might break more, but it didn't. And George is going to... Uh, Put it out. This will give him a bogey. George got a bogey five. Puts him out to the car. Lee Elder putting up for his car. Lift the cup. George Archer picked up a bogey five, as did uh, Lee Elder. They're both out in two over par 36. The front nine is par 34. Out in 36. And here is George Knudsen with a putt of about seven feet uphill. He has this to go out in four under par, 30. He's going to be short up, up the hill, and he left it short. He's had good luck on those putts today, and with the exception of a three putt over there on the par three in this one, George got his par four to stay at three under par. So here are the fellas, and I'm going to chat with him just a moment. And, George, I'd have to uh, say that you had a pretty good round of golf there. Not only putting fine, you hit a couple of putts that jumped straight up in the air and down in the cup, but uh, you played very well. I know you've heard the well-known saying in golf, George, that you drive for show and putt for dough, but I felt your second shots were the key to your front nine. On the second hole, you nipped a little wedge shot that faded back in at the flag with a lot of spin and finished cup high about six feet away. Then on three, you stroked a six iron shot that carried right over the flag and stopped immediately about 12 feet in back of the cup. On number five, you were really close as you drilled another long six iron shot to the green and almost right in the cup as the ball stopped about 10 inches away. You selected your six iron once more here on the long ninth hole and your ball ended up just seven feet from the hole. You missed the birdie here, but the fine second shots to the green paid off on the second third and fifth holes. I was pleased. It was a good nine for me. I can it say certainly that. was, George. And uh, George Archer, I'd say that uh, as fine a putter as you are, that the people who are going to watch this uh, won't believe it, the way you put it. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they gave me a trophy a little while ago for good putting. I think I'll have to send it back the way I'm putting today. But uh, George did play very well. He hit some real good shots that nine and did make some good putts. But uh, Lee and I are just kind of watching him today. Well, Lee, I'd have to say the same thing about you. You couldn't buy a putt either. Well, Jim, that's the breaks of the game, I guess. So maybe some might happen on the back. Who knows? But I do want to say that, George, I'm playing very well, and I'm hoping that he can keep it up. Well, uh, of course, uh, you and Archer know that uh, in metal play, anything can happen. I'm sure George realized that, too, yeah. George Knudsen. We have nine holes to go, and uh, nothing is uh, decided until the final putt on the last green, is it? That's right. So we'll see what happens uh, when we get to 18. Well, good luck. And why don't you fellows go over to the 10th tee, and I'll join you in just a moment. Very good, John. Thank you. On the beautiful par 4, 382-yard 10th hole, Knudsen drove down the left-hand side of the fairway about 270 yards. But his line to the green was blocked by a pine tree. Elder, about 260 yards off the tee, was also in the fairway. 
Archer hit a long one about 280 yards, but he pushed it to the right, and once again he was in among the trees. Here's Lee Elder. Lee with an eight iron. Slightly uphill stance. Starts it right at the flag. It's going to land just to the right of flag. Kicks left and stops just about two feet short. Beautiful shot by Leo. Newton with a pine tree blocking his view had an uphill lie and is using a nine iron. George starts it uh, to the left. It's going to carry it past the pin. Spins back, then to the left. And uh, he is putting uphill about 12 feet out. George Archer spraying his tee shots uh, a little here of late. He's out to the right here in the rough among the small trees, but nothing in his way. Using a wedge, here's George. George is going to land too far to the right, way out to the right, and it hangs up there and has a downhill long approach putt here on the 10th hole. Archer, about 20 feet to the right of the hole, was first to putt. He went just past the right lip and finished about three feet away. He got his par. Newtson, about nine feet from the pen, almost picked up another birdie as his putt stopped just about an inch on the left-hand side, and he also settled for a par. Lee Elder needed this shorty of about three or four feet for his birdie, and he got it. He led Archer by one stroke, but trailed Newtson by four. On the par four, 408-yard 11th hole, Knudsen and Archer were on the green and two in birdie position. But Elder hit his second shot over on the back edge of the green and was away using a wedge. It'll be a little short. The ball uh, is pulling up, hitting into the grain now and stops just about nine feet away. George Knudsen and George Archer are lying in there for birdie putts. Newtson about three feet, Archer about four. Lee's faced with about a nine-footer for his par. Good par. Oh, boy, that's a good, good par four there by Elder. Here's Archer. Archer makes this. He will be tied with Elder at one over. He got it. Good putt by Archer. Gives him a birdie. He goes back to one over par, and George Knudsen could go four under for this putt. About three feet straight uphill. He got it, and uh, this boy is red hot. Knudsen again picks up another birdie, and he goes four under. There's a birdie for Archer on the 11th, a birdie for Knudsen, and a par by Elder. On the 12th hole, the players had another crack at the $10,000 hole-in-one prize money. It's a par three of 132 yards. George Knudsen was first to try for the big money. Here's Knudsen with a nine iron. And here he is again, carried right over the flag. Right over the top of the flag. I don't think I've ever seen a man shoot a ball straighter than George has today. George Archer, nine iron. Big George hits it. It's going to be on line also, just a little bit to the left. And, boy, what a spin that had on it. It stopped very fast, and he has about the same putt that uh, Knudsen has. Here's Lee Elder, also with a 9-iron. <laughs> Lee Elder carries the ball. It hits the uh, chocolate drop up near the gallery and gets a good kick to the right, and uh, he is on the green with about a 15-footer. After both Knudsen and Elder settled for their par threes, Archer had about a nine-footer for his birdie. Hey, oh, well, well, he's got a stringer going, string of two in a row. And through the 12 hole, Archer picks up uh, his second birdie in a row. He pulls back to even par, and George Knudsen is four under par on Shell's wonderful world of golf. On the par five, 544-yard 13th hole, all went on to par the hole, so there was no change in the match. On the par four, 425-yard 14th hole, Knudsen was in the middle of the fairway some 285 yards from the tee. Archer and Elder's drives were in the trees over on the left. 
Lee Elder, about 265 yards off the tee, will be using an 8-iron for his second shot. Lee Elder starts his 8-iron second shot on the right side of the green. It's going to carry on the front and stop. And he's on the green with a long putt for a birdie. George Archer has a good lie in the rough, and he's using a wedge. He pushes it off to the right. He's going to land on the front side of the green. Hits soft green, spins back, and he has a very long uphill putt. He's down on the lower side of this double terrace green. Knudsen, four under par. Here's George, conversed with his caddy a little bit. They decided to go with a wedge. He's right on line again. Fine shot. It's right at the flag. And there he is again, right on line. This boy has been good to that flag so many times today, and he stops just about seven feet short. All three players two-putted to pick up their pars, and Knudsen led by four strokes. On the par four, 427-yard 15th hole, all three players were in the middle of the fairway. Knudsen is away using a six iron. George is right at the flag again. He's going to be a little strong, but it's over the green. It lands on the green, jumps up into the gallery, and stops in the fringe. Here's Lee Elder. Lee with a seven iron is going to be at the center of the green. It lands just on the upslope, and Lee has a nice putt for a birdie. George Archer with an eight iron. That's off to the right. It's going to land in the gallery. Boom! Just up over the gallery. Hit the down slope and bounce back over under the tall trees. George Archer in trouble over the green. George's second shot flew on him with an eight iron. He's coming back with a wedge. Going to try to chip it right on the green. Did a little strong. Past the hole. Rolls on and on and down the hill. And George is about nine or ten feet out. Here's Knudsen. He holds a couple of these today, the long ones, and has missed an awful lot of short ones. George is about 24 feet from the flag. He's going to putt it. Arm, but a bite. Gave that a good jab, and it ran past the hole about six feet. Lee Elder, nine feet away, just about cup high on his second shot. Lee's one over to the right, came up off of it, left the blade open, and uh, skidded the ball off the right side. And he's going to put it out for his par. He got his par, and he's his score at one over par. Here's George Archer with about the same length, but for par. He, too, missed it on the right. George picks up a bogey to go back one over par, and he and Lee are tied at present for second place. Here's George for par four. Strong on his downhill approach putt. Ooh, again, missed it off to the left, and he has been very bad with this uh, type of putt. A bogey for Knudsen, a bogey for Archer, a par for Lee Elder. The players got their pars on the 169-yard par 3 16th hole, and there was no change in the match. is a city without equal, where beauty is commonplace, and the commonplace is beautiful. It is Rio de Janeiro.
When the city fathers were faced with providing service station facilities in this setting, they turned to Shell of Brazil to build them. Shell met the challenge by designing low, modern buildings with lots of glass so they wouldn't spoil the view. Then Shell hired pretty girls to greet the customers, for pretty girls are as much a part of the Rio scene as Sugarloaf and the Copacabana. Being awarded the exclusive right to build service stations in the midst of such beauty was an honor of which Shell of Brazil is proud. This pride is reflected in the results. Smart, modern stations that fit the setting. Stations that perform a necessary function unobtrusively and attractively. But building attractive service stations is nothing new to Shell. For proof, check the one in your neighborhood. If it isn't a modern building, looking more like a contemporary house than a service station, chances are it soon will be. For Shell is engaged in a project to rebuild, restyle, and landscape its service facilities wherever possible. When Shell builds a service station in your neighborhood, it realizes it is sharing that neighborhood with you, and Shell wants to be a good neighbor. It's all a part of Shell's efforts to make this world where we all must live a little more pleasant. A part of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. The par 5 17th hole is not only the longest hole on this course, but one of the longest holes I've ever seen on any golf course. It's 614 yards from tee to green. Lee Elder's tee shot was in some light rough on the right side of the fairway. Archer and Knudsen's drives were down the middle. Archer out about 275 yards. Knudsen 255 yards. So Elder playing his second shot was away. Lee selected a three wood. He pulled the shot off to the left, finishing in some rough and was faced with a difficult downhill lie for his third shot. Knudsen also going with a three wood. George was right on line down the center of the fairway and in a good position for his approach shot to the pin. Archer was last to play. He hooked his three wood shot off to the left and finished in the rough leaving himself a tricky wedge shot to the green. Lee Elder ready to play his third shot on the long 17th hole, 614 yards. With a wedge, he carries it just up on the ridge. It stops fast, and he has about a six foot of far birdie. Here's George Archer, about 80 yards short of the green, also with a wedge. George is gonna land it short. I don't think it's gonna run up. No, it has no chance, and he has a long approach putt. George Knudsen, three under par and heading for a new course record here at the Sao Fernando Golf Club in Brazil. Off to the left is George's wedge shot. It almost carried on to uh, Lee's ball. It uh, hit into the gallery, kicked back on the green, just about one foot on the clipped portion of the green. George Archer on the front side. George left his approach shot on the lower left half of this terrace green and has a difficult 30-foot putt for his birdie. Well, it fell off to the left, and George has this four-footer for his par. My old friend Gene Sarazen is sitting by his TV set watching our match today. Incidentally, Gene will join me in our final match at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. George Archer got his par five. Stays one over par. George Knudsen also about 30 feet away. It's going to be short online, and... Uh, he left a short. Lee Elder with a six foot putt. He makes this, he could jump into second place. He got it. Well, fine putt by Elder, and that's one of the very few that he has made today. Lee jumped into second place and uh, narrowed the margin down to three strokes. Knudsen got his putt for a par. And through the 17th hole, Lee Elder picks up a birdie, par by the other two players, and George Knudsen is three under par, leading on Shell's wonderful world of golf. 
We're on the final hole of our match here today, coming to you from the Sao Fernando Golf Club in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The 18th hole is uphill all the way, short in distance, only 306 yards, and it's a par four. Very picturesque tee shot back in the trees to an uphill green. Lee's going with the driver. Fine shot down the center of the fairway. It's going to hit the incline, kicks off to the left, stays in the fairway, runs down to that big drive right in front of the green. But he's uh, stymied with the small pine trees off there. His ball landed in the center of the fairway, kicked off to the left, and although he's only a few feet in the rough to the left, he has these uh, four or five pine trees between the, his ball and the cup. George Orchard back on the tee with his driver. Starts it down the right side. It's going to get on the uh, upslope. It's kicking off to the left, too, running way down to the left, up toward the green. And will it hang up there? It's hanging up. Oh, what a drive! Just off the edge of the green. And he uh, must be over 300 yards off the tee. Here's George Knutson. George is going with the driver. He's on the right line, which is the right side of the fairway. Will it kick left? It lands on the embankment on the right-hand side, kicks back and rolls all the way down, leaving him about 100 yards short of the green. Here's George Knutson off to the right in the light rough, using a pitching wedge, gripping down on the club, a lot of hand action, lofts it right at the flag. It's going to land uh, just a little bit to the left. Swings a little more to the left, and George has a straight uphill putt of about 12 feet to go four under par. He is three under at this point. The winner of this match goes on to a semifinal match in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada at the St. Charles Country Club. Here's Lee Elder, one of the popular pros on the tour today. Made a birdie the last hole to lead by shot over Archer. It's a fine shot from below the trees there. He had about five of the pine trees blocking his view, and uh, it was a blind shot for him, but he lofted it up just past the cup. Here's George. Eight iron. He's pulling up a little short, and he's about the same distance as Knudsen, and Lee Elder has about a seven-footer. George Archer and Lee Elder battling for uh, second place here. Archer putting for a birdie. He's about 11 feet out. It's... Oh! Boy, that's a good-looking putt. He's hit so many of those today that uh, with just a quarter of an inch either way, he might have hold four or five of them. George got his par here on the 18th hole for one over par 71. Nice round of applause here for George Archer. Knudsen is put for 66. Ooh, again, he slid it off to the right there, and uh, George Knudsen will attempt to make this putt for his par, and he got it. <laughs> George Archer. Par one over 71, par here, and uh, setting a new course record, George Knudsen with a fine three under par 67. Here's Lee Elder for 69. Oh! Well, that was a good attempt there by Lee. It hung out on the left side, and he's going to tap it in. Gets his par, and uh, that's a fine 70 for Elder. 70 for Elder, 71 for Archer, and a fine 67 for George Newsom. Well, Big George, uh, things just wouldn't go right for you today, would they? Well, Jimmy, I enjoyed playing very much. Uh, I think George played a little too good. He got us all a little scared out there. He <laughs> kept knocking at the flag all day, and we just kind of uh, were knocking at the trees. But I really enjoyed playing. Uh, I had a great time. Well, uh, we certainly want to thank you on behalf of Shell Oil for appearing on the show and want to wish you the best of everything on your future uh, tournaments. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Nice to have you, George.
And Lee, uh, nice comeback there. Birdie on 17 looked awfully good here on this 18th hole. Yes, it sure did, Jim. And, you know, I was worrying about that shot down here under the tree. <laughs> Especially after George knocked it pretty close. I said, well, gee, if I hit the tree and make five and he make three, he going to chop me up anyway. <laughs> but uh, I do want to thank Shell very much for having me on the show. And I want to congratulate George uh, Knudsen and uh, hope him good luck in the future. Well, thank you, Lee. It's uh, We're delighted to have you on the show. And uh, you've gave us a nice performance. I know that everyone will, uh, watching the show will enjoy it. Thank you very much. And George Knudsen, congratulations on that fine 67, and I just heard a moment ago that's a new course record here. Thank you, Jim. I think that might be my first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it isn't. George, I thought you played very well, too. I'd have to concur with uh, what Lee and, and uh, George Archer said. I thought you played well. You got off to a good, fast start and just played steady all the way through. Yes, I, uh, the stretch of holes that I liked were number nine through about 15. I thought I played exceptionally well, and uh, I knew pretty well that if George or Lee were going to make a run at me after the lead that I had on the front side, that uh, I better hit some golf shots. Unfortunately, I did. We'll see you up at your home uh, uh, in... Winnipeg. Winnipeg, yeah. on to the know, St. Charles, is that right? That's the course I grew up on. Oh, well, I'm really a, looking forward to that. Well, that's wonderful. I know the people in Canada uh, will be looking forward to seeing you, too. I'll be looking forward and, to seeing uh, them, too. Thank all of you, and uh, why don't you fellas go in the clubhouse, and I'll join you for a spot of tea. <laughs> a spot of tea. <laughs> you can bet me. Thank you, man. <laughs>